Sure, they're making up customs as we go. Lily, sit. Put the sausages down. Good girl. Is that the dog banging on the door? Oh my god. So if you can hear that banging, that's the beagle who just ran away with a packet, like an entire packet of frozen sausages. She was only foiled by the fact that they were frozen and she couldn't devour them all. And now she's banging on the door trying to get back in. Which brings me to today's subject, which is abolish citizenship, the only way to be a good global citizen. So this guy, Dmitry Kochanov, who wrote this amazing book called Citizenship, he recently published a short eight-page paper, which I should have highlighted before bringing it here. But he wrote a paper which seems to be subtweeting some journal that was, that was dumping on his book. It's an interesting subject because, say, Kochanov or someone like Joseph Karens, they're basically, if you read Joseph Karens on the ethics of immigration, his basic point is anyone who looks at this subject seriously sees that it's an ethical monstrosity and that we shouldn't be restricting people's freedom violently. There is no ethical justification to limit a brown child's freedom to move or an African child's freedom to move, whereas a Norwegian or a Canadian can. It's just the structural racism that has become literally colonial furniture. We just accept it and think, oh, that's an interesting architectural style. So I'll read a bit from uh, his thing because he's got some pretty sick burns in here. So one thing Kochanov says is, like slavery, like sexism, like racism, citizenship knows no justification once you leave the purview of those few whom it unduly privileges. The sexists, the racists, and the super citizens have convinced themselves and want to convince all of us that dignity, equality, and freedom are not applied to all. This is wrong. So this is essentially the basic point, which I go through my article when I say, let me start from a simple fact. Your children, and I'm talking to you white people, your children are no better than mine. Yet this is not where we live. All children born today are born into a world of passport apartheid. And let me tell you my personal experience with that. So I'm a dual citizen. I was born in Canada, which I had fuck all to do with. And I'm of Sri Lankan origin, which I also had fuck all to do with. Yet those are my two passports. And they each have their own. Well, I mean, the Sri Lankan one is basically a global kick me sign as I go into. This entitles my children to basically concentration camps in Australia or drowning in the EU. We can just float around the world and get through if we're lucky. But otherwise, we're viewed as something, someone that, you know, on a good day has COVID-19. That's the status of a Sri Lankan passport. We don't actually have COVID-19 at the rate of Western countries. Now, the patent unfairness of this, which I feel and which I perceive, is that white children can go all over the world. So white people are like, ah, oh, tourism, I love to travel. I want to be a global nomad. We'll try and tell that to someone fucking Lagos. They don't have that opportunity. People don't understand this because they don't live it because they don't see it. And I started to live it when uh, my children were born. So my children are entitled to white passports through me and through my mother. We're allowed to pass it on once each. This is like the dispensation. So for my daughter, my wife got her the UK citizenship and she can travel nicely wherever she wants. For my son, we haven't got it yet because it's simply much easier to go there and get it than to apply from here. You have to often submit paperwork saying, oh, we're really married, you know, like give them a bloody sheet, some used condoms, something to prove that you have a real marriage. I don't know if that's a real marriage. But my son, essentially by a quirk of paperwork, is only Sri Lanka. So this is something I realized when we were applying to go travel to Korea. When Korea, just as a point, Korea, you should know better. Korea has been colonized. Korea should be on our side. But no, Korea is still developing, and they're coming up, which is good for them. But they're developing in the wrong way, which is they're becoming like the colonial assholes that should really shut the door on everyone and exploit everyone. I'll go on on this a bit. In Korea right now, migrant workers are living in unheated tents or are living in terrible conditions, are suffering disproportionately under COVID, not getting any relief. Cam people from Cambodia, people from all over the world. And I'm like, come on, Korea. You're coming up from our side of the world. So don't forget where you I've gone off a bit about Korea, which is not the point. My point was white people. Meanwhile, rich white children can go wherever they want. White children can see the world, while brown children sweat in visa lines. And you don't realize this, but we really do sweat in visa lines. If you're applying for a baby, you have to bring them. We brought our son to the, so UK outsources there. So there's a private company doing the UK visa stuff. 
uh, to go to the UK. And then it's staffed by Sri Lankan people, like a damn colonial outpost. And we have to go there, leave our phone. And our son at this point was just shitting everywhere he went. As in like everywhere he went, he had to take a dump. So obviously he takes a dump there. And I'm cleaning him, there's no changing station. And the, it's just humiliating the fact now, my son is going to the UK to get the UK citizenship that he's entitled for, but the whole place is full of brown children who are sweating in their mother's arms. And for what goddamn reason? Because the world says that they as brown children are lesser than white children based on birth. Now, my son has done nothing to deserve the lack of rights he has, nor the rights that he will get from the paperwork. But it's just this system of structural racism that he's born into, the colonial furniture of our age. And I'm telling you that it is monstrous. And I understand if you're not aware of it, because even I was not aware of it. Even I, as a dual citizen, didn't really question why I came here to visit my cousins on holiday when we were living in the States, but my cousins did not come to visit me. I never questioned that. I never questioned the fact that I had more rights than my cousins, and neither did they question it. But I'm telling you, now is the time of great tumult in the world where we must start questioning these things. And you must question what side of history you are on, because we are living in a time of history of apartheid when people are considered to have less freedom to move based on where they're from, how they're born, who they're born to, and the color of their skin, ultimately the color of their skin. If you look at a map of passport apartheid, it's African countries, South Asian countries, it's dark countries that are shut out, and it's essentially poor countries or the colonized countries. And the question is, is it right to judge someone based on their circumstances? Is it right to judge someone based on wealth? When do we decide that, oh, you have to be rich to move? Is somebody going to tell that to Jesus when he goes from Egypt to Bethlehem? This is not right. This is a system of discrimination, which is only right by the fact that it's so entrenched and the fact that we do not question it. But I'm asking you quite sincerely. No, let me clarify that. I'm not fucking asking you. I'm telling you that you must question it. And I'm telling you that you cannot hold our children down. I think the Zoom has changed. There's obviously an edit here. So I'd like to read a bit more from Kochanov because he's got some burners in here. I'd highly recommend reading this eight pager because it's just eight pages, but his book Citizenship really opened my eyes. A lot of stuff that I feel as in the gross injustice of it, he's looked at it, uh, he's looked at it in a sort of scholarly, but also I think suitably angry way. As in you gotta have some burning, anger at this because we're sitting in a system of apartheid which crushes people and you may experience it when you see oh like those poor refugees but it's crushing humiliating this is a system of violent borders there's another book called that which is quite good and to go in depth into it in a more sort of chill way is joseph Cairns. but even he in his own way is like there's no justification for this no one who's looked at this seriously can find any justification for keeping my brown child down while a random white child is up so let me read from kochanov so Kochanov says, the next step from citizenship is no citizenship. Slavery, sexism, and racism cannot aspire to be replaced once they have been confined to the junkyard of history. Their functions are outright incompatible with the core values we hold dear. Now, this is why I started, I've write, written about this before, this is why I started writing about this again. I think Kochanov is trying to go from this abstract point of saying, okay, citizenship is bad, to the question that necessarily follows, which is, okay, what do we replace it with? And then his answer is nothing, no citizenship. Now this seems radical, but really before World War I, there weren't really passports, people were moving. Even in Sri Lanka, a lot of really established business families, their great grandfathers or grandfathers just got off a boat here and set up. I'm sorry for all the noise, there's like, I live in a house. Um, so people just got off boats and traveled. And he points to this in this article as well, whereas the colonial citizenships we had were in many ways better than the decolonized ones. As in a Commonwealth passport, you could sort of go anywhere. Whereas now it's like, mm, no, can we hold you underwater? I'll continue with Kochanov. What he says is, hell breaks loose over those who dare not die while illegally crossing the securitized and militarized borders between prosperous democracies and the rest of the world. Every border guard in a modern Western democracy, and look at these people, because they're holding guns, this is the structural end of violence. Every time you pass through an airport, you're being arrested, and you don't notice if you have a white passport, but if you're brown or black, you're shitting bricks, especially if you're stateless. I'll start that again. Every border guard in a modern Western democracy, whether he helps bouncing rubber boats back towards the Libyan coast, tortures hundreds of children who are not orphans in the detention centers in Arizona, or waves a Swiss yachtsman through at St. Barth, Fox, Switzerland, is a guardian of irrational and unjustifiable blood privilege. The majority of those suffering the most are black. The world's law and order polices the understanding that this is the kind of blood that is particularly rubbish. 
And if you thought my Fox Switzerland was a bit of a non sequitur, there are nine countries that are blocking a patent free vaccine at the WTO, and Switzerland's one of them. So fuck Switzerland, fuck Norway, fuck Canada, fuck the US, fuck the EU. Unfortunately, fuck Brazil. Maybe better if they had someone like Lula in. Fuck Japan. I mean, come on, dude. We thought you were cool, but no, I forgot. You're imperial. And fuck Australia. Fuck all these countries. They're the enemy of humanity. To get back to this point, Kochanov is saying, who needs open racism if there is citizenship? And indeed, this is the point. We consider it wrong, or at least most of us, right? I guess racism is fucking flying these days. But most of us consider it wrong, discriminate against someone based on the color of their skin. And yet we consider it completely normal to discriminate against someone based on the color of their passport. This is something we all accept. And think of what we are restricting here. We are restricting freedom of movement, which is precisely what we restrict. We put someone in jail. I'm not happy with these video settings. Hold on. Am I in focus? Freedom of movement is in many ways the foundation of all other rights. That's what we take away when we put into jail. It affects who you can associate with, who you can fall in love with. Again, I'm sorry for the background noise. It is a house. Who you can associate with, who you can love, how, whether you can earn a living, whether you can get away from danger. This is all founded on freedom of movement. And this is precisely the right that we deny. And this is precisely why this system is so monstrous. Then, of course, look at how this system is played out. If you look at the maps of passport apartheid, it is the brown, the black, the colonized nations that are held down by this. And yet citizenship is just a way of laundering the same thing that's been going on for hundreds of years and which is happening with climate change, which is that you're fucking us. And I'm saying, fuck with us no more. And again, I'm not phrasing that as a question. I'm not asking you to appeal to your white privilege or your reason even. I'm telling you this is the way it is. These are our rights. They are God-given. You are suppressing them through violence, and I'm just telling you you're dicks. So what does a world of no citizenship look like? Well, it's quite simple. I think Kochanov goes into it here. He says, when anyone can settle in France by law, not only a properly documented former colonial subject or a Swiss businessman, legal equality will be preserved and French blood privilege forgotten. The tricolors can still fly, and French poetry can go on being recited, but citizenship will have lost its poisonous effects, just like the title of Countess on a visiting card today. So the point is, in my perspective, is that citizenship should be no more important than what sports team you like. If you like Paris Saint-Germain, fine, but we're not going to drown you in the Mediterranean if you don't. So that's all citizenship should be. We all have equal dignity as human beings. We all have the freedom to move. And these systems that we're using to keep people in place have no moral or ethical or even economic justification. I won't go into the economic parts, but there's a good comic called The Case for Open Borders, which approaches it from like, oh, how will this benefit white people? So, hmm, brown people will come here. Maybe they'll make vaccines for us. Or they'll do our low-wage jobs. Or they'll, I'm sorry, that's not what the authors are meaning. But I do say there is that realm of argument for open borders, which is saying, oh, it's good for us. We'll have more workers. We'll have more money. We'll have people to care for us. And I'm saying, fuck if it's good for you. I'm just saying that it's right. But that does go into the economic aspect. By many estimates, it would double world GDP. The question is whether doubling GDP is something we should be doing. But we have brought into this idea of free markets. Oh, we can expand our economy through free markets. But the fact is we do not have a free market because we do not have free movement of labor. And that is a core piece of capitalism, let's say. You need to have free movement of labor. What we have is free movement of capital. So all of your rich people are looting your countries. Now you've been reverse colonized, essentially. They were looting us. Now they're looting you, using us for labor. So they're looting your countries, stashing their money abroad, sending jobs abroad, and you're sort of going along with this because capital can move and labor cannot. And what they sell you in return is the idea of keeping brown people like me out or keeping African people out. And you can be satisfied that you're at least better than the Africans. But then look at COVID-19. Are you better than the Africans? Any Nikang African place has a better public health system than you. There's a CLR James quote which says, the most poisonous myth of all this fucking mythology is the idea that white people have nothing to learn from Africans, when in fact you have many things to learn from Africans. We're not like this orientalized thing where we're doing everything right, but we're definitely doing some things better, and we're definitely doing some things differently. And this exchange is good for us. And Priyam Gopal talks about this in, in her tweets, I guess, but also her book. It's not the colonial powers gave democracy to us. We fought for democracy and we fought for freedom. And then those ideas that we developed here influenced the metropole back in London. And then this exchange is part of human growth. And we are shutting off the growth and that hurts both the oppressor and the oppressed. 
So let's get back to what Kochanov is talking about when he talks about no citizenship or what I titled a Polish citizenship. So this is one of the standard objections to it. You might say, oh, but you might move here or use benefits or make my hallway smell like curry. To which I say, go fuck yourselves, you hypocrites. What are white people doing in Australia or Canada at all? Your ancestors tromped all over the world without any fucking passports, did you? Your colonial ancestors romped around the world, looting and genociding and enslaving, and you're mad because we want to come and what? Pick your food and empty bedpans for your grandma? All of you settler colonists can go fuck yourselves. We'll settle wherever we please. And I have a relative who sort of came up with this philosophy, where I think my dad was asking him, and he was just like, uh, yeah, they came here, so I'm fucking coming there. And that's the basic logic of it. If you buggers wanted to close the world, you should have fucking stayed where you were. But as it is, I think we should take the fuck over. Meghan Markle is just the beginning. And the fact is, this is sort of what the blimp reads in Scarface. The world is yours. So to any brown or black child out there maybe listening to this, don't let them say they're better than you. And don't sit in that visa line and think like, oh, I deserve this. I must beg for my freedom. Fuck that shit. The world is yours. And we're not even being genocidal dicks about it. We just demand the human right to move, which is not even the rights you white people took, which is the right to exploit, to bomb everyone. But white people are standing on this mountain of colonialism, genocide and exploitation, which is leading to climate change, which is an uncontinued sort of track of exploitation. This environmental ruin and then lecturing us about the morality of citizenship. So fuck your citizenship. It's barbed wire around an indigenous graveyard. It's a moat around a colonial crime scene. If we want to justice, quite frankly, I think we should take all of Belgium and give it to the two Congos. I think we should take all of France and give it to Senegal. That's what they deserve. I don't want just the stuff in the British Museum back. We want fucking everything from, I don't know any parts of England, but at least Bristol, massive attack came from there. England should be fucking divided up among the colonies. We wanted fairness. How, we're not even asking for that. We're just asking for freedom to move as God gave us across God's green earth. And again, I keep using the word asking, and it's not what I mean. I'm fucking telling you. Now, Kochanov's position, so I'm kind of following him here, right? Because I've also been screaming that citizenship is bad, but which is a crazy thing to say, right? Because you like to think that you're a good citizen. That from, I think at some point that might've been the, my Twitter bio. Like you wanna say, I'm a, I'm a good citizen. But what Kochanov talks about is how we're complicit in this. It's this complicity that this is the problem. This is what we have to break. And part of that means breaking the idea of looking at citizenship as something good. So what he's saying, what I'm saying is this whole citizenship project is irredeemable. It's indivisible from the colonialism and racism in which it was founded, and the whole rotten project needs to go. You accept this. You just haven't extended your reasoning far enough to understand. And I say you accept this, because if you're watching this, I assume you're like anti-racist and God willing anti-colonial. And yet look at the fruits of this. Look at the fruits of this shit. So we have citizenship is the fruit of this racism. It is the product of it. So we can't reject the cause and keep the effect. I will close with this, which is that we're all kind of getting to the point where we're thinking, hey, nationalism is bad. Like nationalist politicians, they're real dicks, aren't they? But then what is nationalism with lawyers? What is nationalism with a Navy? That's citizenship. So we must therefore conclude that citizenship is also bad. And citizenship as we know it has to go. In the future, your citizenship should be no more important than your favorite sports team. So cultures will continue, cultures will continue to prove, this change is a vital part of culture. Just look at your food. All it means is that human freedom, human opportunity, human prosperity, and human dignity will be increased. And at this point, to close, I just want you to look back in the past. I, I read the past sometimes. I'm like, who are these dicks that supported slavery? Like, who are these dicks that supported colonialism? And then I look at the world today, and we are the dicks. We are the dicks that support passport apartheid. And look at yourself through the lens of history. Look at yourself through the lens of literature. When I read books or I read history, I always try to empathize. And who do we empathize with? With the downtrodden, with the oppressed, with the people getting shat on. And yet here we are in the present day, shitting all over the world. So my point is, abolish citizenship. Human freedom means human freedom to move across the world for all of us. You can come up with little nitty gritty arguments for this. And then I would invite you to read Joseph Karen's or that Open Borders comic, which goes into it case by case. But I'm coming to you with the clear moral perspective, which is that your children are no better than mine. And my children 
have every right to the world. So for further reading, I would recommend definitely Dmitry Kochanov's Citizenship. It's a small book. It's real fucking page turner, right? Because it's, it's what I call like an academic burner. It's got academic knowledge and obviously references and he's a lawyer and shit. But it's a fucking burner because he's got the suitable, like, if you look at something close enough and you're like, holy shit, this is evil. He's got that suitable rage. Channeled, of course, channeled. Joseph Cairns has written some thick books where it goes into all of the ethics of it. I think he's probably the most prominent ethicist on this. And even just a few chapters of that are quite enlightening. There's this other dude whose name I've forgotten, I'm sorry. But his book, Violent Borders, is a collection of articles, which is quite good. Oh, and there's this other book I've just started, which, I, I, I mean, it started well, so I guess I could recommend it, but it's called Traveling While Black, and it's about African, I think Kenyan, um, but it's her experiences being a global traveler, which is sort of, I think that sort of thing is important to read, because the fact is, as Kochanov says, citizenship is invisible as long as you have the best one. And if you're watching this, perhaps you have the best one, you think it's fine, because, hey, I can, like, go on vacation and shit. But to an African person, it's like, you have no idea how stressful going on vacation is. Like, there's so many African people that can't go to... Con I think there's been conferences about, say, African AI, which are held in Europe, and half the Africans can't fucking go. You have no idea how stressful it is. Like, the bank statements we have to bring, the humiliation we have to go through, and the fact is we pay you for this. So... This is a phone. Uh, so I think it's important to see that personal perspective as well, because this is hurting people. And if I might close, close, close again, this all comes back to the golden rule, which is, how would you like to be treated? Would you not also like to be free? Do you like to go on vacation? Do you like to work where you choose? Do you like to fall in love? We like the same things. So you're no better than us. Your children are no better than, than mine or any of my neighbors. So what we're asking for is simply the golden rule. And what I'm here to do is simply beat you over the head with it.